So, even though I am neck deep in the middle of two, well, we'll just say two, it's more than that, but two other projects, I have decided to start another one. And um, you've seen the title of the video, so you know what it is. But for those of you who can't read, I'm going to make this right here. Now, sorry, uh, by interview. Um, now, I never knew what one of these was, never heard of one, never seen one until I saw a video from one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, YouTube channel is Fran Lab, and I highly recommend you check her out. I'll put a link to her video in the description of this one. And she has, or she got a hold of a, an actual, a real one. And um, I highly recommend, if you haven't seen her videos yet, pause mine now, go watch hers, and then come back and finish mine and it'll make more sense. Um, but it's an old type of a display unit that'll flash through several different digits or characters. And when I saw her video and when I saw what it was and how it worked, I just, I had to build one. I, I have to make one. Um, now, I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger than the real thing just because it would be easier to build it bigger. Um, uh, but um, so I'm putting this video out now just to put it out there that I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be working on this. It's probably going to take a while. This is going to be a side burner project. So um, so hopefully I'll get a video out uh, once a month or so. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about my plans for how to do this. First off, let's take a talk about how it works. Again, Fran does a great job of explaining how it works, but I'm going to give it my best shot here. So as you can see here, there are, there are several slides, and each slide has a series of squares, or it's a black slide with a series of square openings, like checkerboard style. And if you could imagine so use, use your imagination here for a second. If you can imagine that I printed this on a clear sheet, and I have two of them, and I stacked one perfectly on top of the other, well, you would still be able to see through all of the white squares. But if you took one and slid it down the, di the dimension of one square, then every black square on the top sheet would be covering a white square on the bottom sheet, so therefore it would blank out and you wouldn't be able to see anything. But if you took one of those squares and you put a number on it or a letter on it, then it wouldn't matter how you slid it down. Well, let me rephrase that. If you slide it down to where each one of those black squares is covering one of those white squares, well, it would blank out everything around it, but you would still be able to see the one. I really hope that makes sense. So with all of the different characters, whichever character you want to see, you've got to drop that one down. You've got to drop that one down. And the way it's done is on the bottom of each one of those, there's a little keyway and little rocker plates. And you position the rocker plates so that when a keyway is open, it can drop down. But the other keyways would haul all the other plates up. In this design, and in the one I'm going to build, there will be six solenoids. You can see three here and there's three on the other side. Each one of those solenoids controls one of those plates to rock one way or the other, to fit in or not into one of the keyways. And so what happens then is this whole tray of slides first raises up. There's one solenoid we can't see in this photo. That whole, that whole track raises up. All the little keyways go into position and then the whole thing drops back down, and then one of them will be able to drop down further if it fits into the keyways. So this one would drop down, that one would not, because it's being held up by that one. And whichever one drops down is the character you would see. So that's how it works, as best as I can tell. Um, the way I'm going to build it is I'm going to divide it into probably five sections. Uh, one section uh, will be all of the slides of all the different characters. One section will be the lamp and the lens and a reflective lens in the front. 
Another section will be the six solenoids and rocker arms. And then another one will be the other solenoid that raises and lowers the whole unit. So I think the first assembly I'm going to work on is going to be all of the slides right here. Um, well, I'm going to kind of work on those and the solenoids at the same time. I can work on these now because that's just a matter of designing them and printing them. Um, these, I ordered the solenoids on eBay. Uh, they're coming from China, so yeah, good luck there. Um, so once I get the solenoids in, I can start laying them down and getting the spacing for those properly. And then I can, based on that spacing, I can decide where the keyways go. And I also need to figure out, I also need to design the, um, the keyways themselves. Now, since this is my version of it, my design of it, I can make it kind of however I want. And it's called a Bina view because it's binary, I guess. So in my design, my plan, I want the binary word, or the binary word, the binary number one to give me the number one character. Now there's going to be six solenoids. So we have binary word or binary number zero. We have binary number one. We have binary number two. I'm not going to go through all of them because I'm running out of room. But let's just talk about the number one. I want binary number one to display number one. And again, each one of those digits is for one of the solenoids. So if we're looking at these little rockers here, Let's just say that all of the rockers will either be in this position or that position. Say so we pivot at that point here. This position would equal a, let's just say a zero. This position will equal a one. And again, I can make it whatever I want. So if I want that tray to drop down when we have this binary word here, then all of the rockers will be this position, but this one would be in this position. And that's when I want the tray to drop down. So the keyways, the keyways that are shaped like that would, for number one, the keyways printed on the bottom or cut out into the bottom of the slide, well, in order for this one to drop down, it would have to be shaped like that, so it can drop down. But all of the others would have to be shaped... And, yeah, that's one thing I'm going to have to figure out. And I don't have a lot of room here, but you get the idea. Because I think I just did those backwards. That eraser probably not. Yeah, that eraser really sucks. But basically... A number one keyway is going to have to be shaped like this. A zero keyway would have to be shaped the opposite way. So that way, yeah, like that. I never claimed to be an artist. So all of those can drop up into that section, but this one is going to be held up if we have it more in line, it'll be held up. I mean, sorry, it'll be able to drop down over top of that one. And any other combination, let's say this one, for example, let's say that one was flipped over, what well, would be over here holding the slide up? I really hope this makes sense. But anyways, that's a plan. That's something I still have to figure out. Um, I think I got a handle on it, but um, I just have to go through every character. Now I'm going to use six digits. So that will give me more than enough to go from 0 through 9 and then A through Z and with a few left over. So I might have some extra characters. I might have a color slide so I can make it go just red or green. That's just something I have to figure out as I go along. But I'm kind of excited to really get started on this. I just wanted to put it out there that I'm doing it. And um, hopefully some of you are interested in this and you wouldn't mind following along, and um, we'll come back as soon as I get some parts made and kind of show you how it goes. And uh, as always, until next time, thanks for watching.